Hello everybody and welcome back to the first episode in my online career mode series. So in this video I'm going to be introducing you on what this is, how you could possibly join if you're very lucky and why this is going to be such a fun thing to see on my channel and why you should stick around to watch it. So let's get started with the introduction of what this is. So online career mode is basically a discord server full of about 100 people who each have a single team. They control their squads. We have budgets that are tracked in spreadsheets. Everything is done via discord and spreadsheets. And then we play online friendly matches together to simulate a league. This is pretty interesting. You might want to see what this looks like. I'll put some images on the screen right now. And if you want to get involved, check out the description and I've put a link to the Reddit post where the advertising for joining this league can be found. So, you know the league's all done via Discord and spreadsheets, but what do the spreadsheets look like? So, the first thing we need to look at is the table. You can see that there's quite a big skill gap here. Some of the teams have really high goal differences, like Leicester plus 76, and QPR plus 30 down there, and some of the teams have minus 88, like Luton. That's just because of the skill gap between the better players and the worst players in my league, which is the championship, I play as Forest in mid-table, is actually ridiculously high. There's players from Silver, who are towards the bottom of the league. There's players who are elite in Ultimate Team, who are towards the top and in the Premier League. If you ever play a cup game against the Premier League side, especially if you play against someone like my friend Alex Vici, who you've probably seen on the channel, link to his channel in the description below, he is actually insane. So the, dis the difference in skill level is so much bigger than it is on regular career mode, where you're playing on the same difficulty and it's only the stats of the players that matter. No, in this, the better teams have the better managers, the better managers have the better players, and because of all of these combining, it really does compound the difference between skill levels. For example, the Liverpool manager has Mbappe, the Man City manager has Messi, because they were so good, they win the league. Because of this, they had the budget to sign these players when no one else could afford them, and now they have them on their squads permanently. There's only one of each player allowed in the online career mode, so PSG no longer have Mbappe. Messi is only at Man City, he's not at Barcelona as well. And that's why this is so interesting to me. Every single squad is unique. You won't have something like an ultimate team where at the start you'd have every single match having a Renato Sanchez playing against you or a Rashford. No, in this, every single team only has the single players. So Rashford is at Manchester United. Renato Sanchez, I believe, plays in the Bundesliga for one of the managers in that league. So you're only going to play these players once a season or, you know, home and away, I guess. But that just makes things more interesting because you're constantly playing against new and new players. Everyone's trying to find out a player who's going to be extra good for them. So you're going to have more and more weird players that you've probably never played against in Ultimate Team, probably never in career mode as well, that you're coming up against. For example, Nia Kite from the Saudi Arabian League. He's a silver, but he's also the record top scorer in the championship on here. Just because he's so fast, the Coventry manager managed to score 88 goals with him in one season. Of course, in real life, this would be absolutely bizarre, but in FIFA, scoring two goals a game with a player with 90-something pace is not that unbelievable. He managed to keep this up for the whole season, including stat padding against some of the worst players in the league, and that's why he got the record. So that's an explanation of the table and the level of skill that's in the league. What else can we find on spreadsheets? Well, we have every single squad, which has 25 registered players. The top 20, you can't sign from a player. The bottom five, you're allowed to bid on, and any of the reserves are free game for you to sign. So for example, if we go into the Premier League, I could probably sign someone like Jamal Lascelles, even though I'm Nottingham Forest, just because he's outside of that top 20 players. The fixtures tab involves two games every week. One, for example, on the 4th to the 6th of April, the next one on the 7th to 9th, the next one on the 10th to 11th. So you're going to be playing one game in midweek and one game every weekend. You don't have to keep up to this strictly. You can be up to two game weeks ahead or you can drop back probably by two before you start getting pestered by people. But you do have to keep up with the rough pace of the league, which is only two games a week. So it's definitely manageable. There's also a tab with every manager's details because, of course, we're all real people. It's only on PSN, so you've got their Discord names, their PSN, their real names, the time zone, how much budget they've got left for their signings, for example. I'm not going to show you this because, of course, this is personal information. But, you know, just to know that's how it works. You just add them on Discord, send them a message, add them on PSN, invite them to a friendly season game with custom squads, and then, boom, you're playing your matches. 
So while I've been talking about the league, in the background you've been watching highlights of my QPR games. I managed QPR for around 10 games, it didn't go very well, I think I lost all but one. So I'm definitely going to need some education if I want to be good enough to get Forest promoted back to the Premier League. I managed to take over Forest because the previous manager left the league, there was a slot, I had to do a job application, that's right, a real application, messaging the league admin, and then I got the slot just simply because I'm a Forest fan and there was no other Forest fans applying. So that he thought it was best for me to have the club because I'd probably actually fulfill the matches more than a regular fan from a different club would. You can probably tell from my voice how excited I am to be talking about this because this has actually fully rekindled my love for FIFA, especially this year's FIFA. I fell out of love with it, I didn't really enjoy playing it after February, I stopped playing Ultimate Team in December which they're both very early on in the cycle for me. Usually Ultimate Team lasts me until about February and I play career mode all the way through the year. But on this game, I haven't really been playing too much of either, especially since my Schalke save finished on this channel. But this is going to be replacing that. This is going to be online career mode. I'm going to document every single match. I'm not going to upload every single match at once, but instead what I'll do is every single week, I'll do the highlights of the two or three games that I play in that week. Maybe over music, maybe over commentary. You can decide in the comments below. But that's how we're going to be watching this career mode unfold. I'll also be letting you know any interesting things that have gone on in the leagues. For example, Alex Vici, he took over Coventry, now he's the manager of Newcastle. He's got Zlatan up front, so maybe every now and then you'll see a friendly between us on the channel or in one of these highlight videos where you can keep up to date with the Premier League through the mouth of Alex Vici. So that's a very long introduction on how the league works, why it's pretty interesting and why it's so fun to me. You now know I manage Nottingham Forest, but you don't know who any of the players in the team are. So I'm going to quickly run through the squad, I'll put it on the screen too, so you can see how overpowered my defence really is. So we've got Essa in goal from Germany, Matty Cash back at right back, re-signed him from Aston Villa, the previous manager did. We've got Ike Apara from the MLS with a lot of pace. Timothy Fosu Mensa from Leverkusen, again a lot of pace. On the left we have Joe Bryan from Fulham, not that fast but a pretty solid championship defender. In midfield we have Sebastian Luna who's a very fast uh, Uruguayan I think, centre defensive midfielder. He plays a little bit like Kante honestly, he's got a lot of pace, good interceptions. And next to him we have Sam Basau, who's a real forest player. But then the front four are where it gets very interesting. On the left, we have Jordan Securi. On the right, we have Loreto Acosta from Argentina. In the middle, Jesse Lingard. And up front, Hanane from Saudi Arabia. Oh, he plays there. He's actually Brazilian. There's so much trickery, so much pace, so much dribbling ability, and so much good passing here. It's actually kind of ridiculous. We also have Jao Carvalho, really good on the ball, who's a real Forest player. Alero Elia, who's, of course, a legend on FIFA. He's always been super good. Youngster Brennan Johnson, we've got James Forrest at Forrest, how could you not want to watch this series? But hearing this, you might think my team is overpowered for the level. Well, we've got some very good players in this team, especially at Crystal Palace, Cardiff and Brentford. So, the biggest names include Mariano from Real Madrid, Luis Muriel, Lucas Torreira from Arsenal is now playing for Crystal Palace. But the biggest name by far in the whole of the championship plays for Leicester City. On £270,000 per week, Leicester are playing Sergio Ramos to anchor their defence. And he is so impossible to play against, especially when you're using someone like Jesse Lingard or Hanane up front. You just cannot get past Sergio Ramos. That's why he's worth the £14 million coming out of Leicester's budget every single season. They really need to get back to the Premier League and they look like they're on track for that because they have a very good manager who was obviously inspired to join the club because of the level of this team. And, you know, that's another little storyline that's happening in this online career mode. You can expect to see the first matches coming out next Saturday because I need to get a big backlog of matches so I can edit them in bulk and then start getting the episodes ready a week or so in advance. Rather than just editing my QPR career mode which doesn't really mean much to me anymore, we're going to be starting off with game 1 of Nottingham Forest, some of the highlights of which have already been in this video, so go back and rewatch them if you want to get up to date before anyone else. 
If you've got any suggestions for signings that I could make, currently I'm looking for a reasonably strong and fast striker. I'm thinking of someone along the lines of a Patrick Bamford or an Ollie Watkins style striker. So reasonably fast, good at finishing, and around the mid to high 70s, if you know one, let me know because I need you guys to be my scouts. I don't have too much time to be looking through the teams, so I need you guys to help me out wherever we can and you can all be my assistant manager. I hope you stick around for that next video and if you want to see it and you've not subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and put on notifications if you want to make sure you watch that video as soon as it comes out. If you think this is a super cool idea as well, make sure to check out the description, go on the link on the Reddit and maybe see if you can apply. If you do think it's a good idea and you don't want to apply, you just want to watch me, make sure to like the video so that I know we need to keep making episodes and keep uploading them, even though making these videos is going to take me a lot of time. Hopefully you guys all enjoy, hopefully I'll see you on that video as I said, and thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next episode. I'm so excited, hope you guys are too, goodbye.